Hi there, this is David and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky the Third. Today, we're headed off to the fifth plane, the Luminous Entrance. I don't know what we can find here. We went here a little bit, a couple of videos ago before we started doing all those doors and got, you know, the little opening cutscenes and everything. But, uh, yeah. As far as exploring and everything, we have it. Ooh, Feather Brooch Plus. Oh, and another, uh, piece of the story. Huh. Okay. Yeah, we haven't seen those treasures in quite some time. And that feather um, brooch, it prevents faint, and it also makes various statuses go up and down. But unlike the Fool's Locket, it only makes your speed go up by one point. So, not really a fan, actually. We've already seen that little spider guy and that other guy roaming around there, but have we seen this thing? What is this? Are these just the Grimoires? Oh, these things are like all over the place. Man. Eh, we can kill them fast enough. And they seem to have more HP this time around. Like, when if we fought it back in the fourth plane, when we were like, uh, whatever they would, you know, the bosses would kind of turn into that form, they only had like 1500 HP. So I guess these are like a different brand of them. Oh, another door. Ugh, we have so many. Oh, oh, a trial. Huh. Okay. Actually, no. We will not be opening up that door today because the trial's actually relatively difficult, um, and we're going to need to do a little bit of preparation. If you want to go ahead and do the door, I would HIGHLY recommend uh, equipping Mirage Rings on all of your characters. What those do... Did I go the right way? No, I didn't. What the Mirage Ring does is it um, prevents the Petrify status, and there's a lot of guys in there who will petrify you and KILL YOU! Oh, okay. Well, this guy's new. Let's go ahead and fight him. What do we have here? Oh, the Nightmare. Oh, they can freeze you. Or we could kill it in one hit. That works, too. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, oh, also since last time, yeah, I put on Lace and Chloe in my party because they were lowest leveled. It's kind of unfortunate that as we get new characters, they're kind of auto-leveled, but they're higher level than the people that I already have in my party. Because I'm not, like, I'm not grinding or anything. I'm trying to keep some semblance of difficulty in this game. So, yeah, it's just kind of unfortunate that we don't really get to see a lot of these new characters that join us. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. We'll see them eventually. Oh, the succubus. Oh, well, that's no good. Eh, we can probably kill him in two hits anyway. So, there we go. Yeah, there are some statuses in here that you might want to protect yourself from if you're playing in, like, Nightmare Mode. I would have some anti-freeze accessories as well as some anti-poison accessories in here. Um, but honestly, anything to make you go first, like those um, what is it, heat resistant shoes that we got last time, because, you know, it ups your speed so much, those things are a godsend. So, yeah, make sure that you have those. Um, because they are just so good. And, you know, they let you go first. If we could ever hit these guys, seriously. Okay, Chloe, just use some arts or something. Uh, let's see what we can't use. Titanic Roar, yeah. Okay, so yeah, one-shot these guys. These guys can petrify you. So if you don't have an arts user with you to, you know, get rid of them really nicely and quickly like I do, equip some anti-petrify accessories. Mirage rings went on sale this, uh, strata. So, yeah, go ahead and use those. I've already seen those grimoires, so let's just keep on moving and grooving right along. Um, let's see. Towards the end of the game, we're gonna have to be using everybody in our party anyway, so that's why I'm not too concerned about showing everyone, because you'll see them eventually. Okay, this, to actually, like, read what this is saying, you have to, like, say it out loud. This is phonetic you know, spelling. It's... You know, there once was an heir to a kingdom who allowed everyone a piece of meat from a boar and a cup of wine, provided, of course, they found the way to a secret cellar underground. Finding it was no mean feat. So, yeah, I guess that's how you're supposed to, you know, read it. Even though it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but, eh, whatever. It's kind of different. It's cool. Oh, nice little gun. Um, that's okay. We're gonna skip the little way to the right over there for right now, because if we go over here, we get another monument! Sweet! Okay, yeah, I don't really need to do anything. 
But, uh, yeah, we can't go on here, so that kind of sucks. We'll have to find some way to get rid of that barrier. But, what do we have this way? Let's see, going on down here. Uh, we've already seen this enemy. Ooh, Mirage Ring. Yeah, that's that thing that um, prevents the Petrify status. So you're definitely, definitely going to want to have to buy three more of those in order to go through that door and conquer um, that trial that we read about earlier. But down this little teleporter, what do we have? What do we have? Oh, another little treasure. Wow. Ooh, Long Barrel 3. Um, no. That's okay, even though I probably won't really use it. You know, if I put, like, Tita in my party, um, I would want, like, strength increasing accessories, because she's just really strong and it's really good, but if I put another gun user on a party like Oliver, I would probably want to equip Crimson Eyes to increase his, um, magical attack power, since he's just a better caster than he is, um, a fighter. So, now we're going back through the first teleporter that we, uh, skipped the first time, and just follow along the path. See what we got going on here. So yeah, sorry that you're not really seeing Agate or, um, you know, these other people that we're getting, um, but it's just the way that it rolls as far as, uh, just the way that they kind of level these people. It's just, I don't know. It's fine, though. I'm not really too concerned about it. We've seen them enough in the other games also, but yeah, I'll be showing everybody off. It's just some people just end up getting more screen time simply because of when they joined and, you know, the leveling that they have. So it's kind of crappy, but it is what it is. So this devil here is really, really strong, but it's totally worth fighting because he gives you shit tons of experience and lots of sepith too. So if you want to, you can kind of like go in and out of the teleporter here and get a whole lot of experience by fighting him over and over and over again. But like I said before, I'm not going to be really doing any grinding. Just to keep some sort of semblance of challenge in this game, I will be fighting every monster once, but as far as like grinding against like shining palms and stuff like that, not going to happen. No. I'm good. I've been blowing through this game so easily. Anyway, I really feel no reason to overlevel. Oh. Oh, oh, that's right, you don't know what the ceiling stone is. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, yeah, hopefully. Hmm, I don't know. Oh, yeah, that would be really good. Just power through everything. Oh, do you have an idea? Oh, Kurt. Yeah, Kurt's really strong, too. That'd be great. Okay. Well, let's head on back. We can't go through that barrier anyway. Um, we need to unleash the ceiling stone to get rid of that barrier that we saw earlier at that monument. So, let's do it. See who we have. The suspense is killing me. I wish there was a way to make this go faster. Like in the other Trails games, and even the Ease games, you could just hold down, like, the B button, or the O button, I should say, I'm, you know, raised on the Nintendo, what can I say? Um, and it would, like, fast forward everything, but it doesn't work in this game. It fast forwards dialogue, but not actual, like, cutscenes like this. I'll get rid of the barrier, at least. So, who is it they're all surprised? Who? Oh, you guys don't like him? Who is it? Oh, Richard, holy crap! What's this bitch doing here? Um, you know us, and we know you. Yeah, no kidding. Huh, conforting with the enemy over here. Oh, yeah. In case you don't remember who this guy is, this is the one who staged the coup against the Queen back in first chapter. And, yeah, good to see you again, I'm sure. But the Queen ended up pardoning him, and then later on in, like, second chapter and all that, he did help us out, so I guess he's been somewhat redeemed. But, you know, once you cross me, like, I'm done. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, once bitten, twice shy. But Claudia seems to be 
forgiving him, even though, you know, he basically wanted to overthrow your entire reign, kill you, kill your grandparents, kill everybody. Oh, yeah, what is going on here? Well, we already, we already know what's going on here. Just, he doesn't. Oh. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> this is rather abnormal, I must say. Yeah, I love how he introduces himself as a traitor. Like, <laughs> oh, okay, huh? Well, that's kind of cool. By the way, this guy extremely overpowered. If you want the rest of the game on easy mode, stick him and then probably Tita in your party, and uh, yeah, game would be on easy mode, and then just kind of barrel on through everything with both of them and you'd be fine, and then before, you know, the final dungeon hits, go around, level everybody else up, and, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the way to conquer this game pretty easily. It's just, like, his crafts don't really have all that much delay, so you're able to use them, like, over and over and over again. He's really, really good. But again, I'm gonna not be putting him into my team right now, because he's much higher leveled than the other people who I first started off with. It seems like I'm always using these same people over and over and over again, uh, because, you know, they haven't caught up with the people who have been auto-leveled up. <laughs> yeah, you get her. Oh, yeah, um, it's kind of odd, I must say. Yeah, no kidding, you've never been in our party before, it's not like you joined us in second chapter or anything. Yeah, I kind of agree. You know what? I wonder if, like, the Lord of Phantasma decided to end up, like, bringing in, you know, Joshua and Estelle's enemies as well, and, like, sealing them up so then they would, like, fight against them. Kind of like how Gilbert's in here just running around randomly, although we haven't seen him in quite some time either. Yeah, you have helped us out before, but, you know, you still did try to kill Chloe's grandma. You know, just saying. Oh, that is true. Oh, that's true too. And you know, Josette too. She was uh, against us as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, you are a prince of a huge country. You know, you should have some sort of care in the world. Really? Huh. Yeah, I can somewhat believe that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, you were kind of redeemed back in second chapter and for your helping out Joshua, so I'm kind of okay with you, even though you're still my support bot, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, I guess so. If you put it that way. Definitely. You can overcome your past. It's fine. Baller? What's a baller? What, is, what does she mean? What is, I don't know what that is. Someone as baller as you? Like, is that good or powerful? I don't know. Yeah, how do these two know each other? No kidding. Oh. Okay. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right! Back in the door! Yeah! Whenever, um... Onlace went back, and uh, she went to visit Cassius because her granddad wrote a letter and all that, and then she had to go and fight Richard. I remember. Yeah, it was only like five or ten episodes ago, and I'm like, huh? What happened? I'm like, I'm so oblivious. Oh, man. I need to get with it. I need to take some, like, St. John's Ward or something to get my memory back up, because it's really bad. But it's kind of funny. I can remember, like, every single last detail of, like, Final Fantasy 4, Final Fantasy 6, or, you know, Dragon Warrior 1 through 4, these games that I played as a kid. But, like, these newer games, I'm like, eh, I'm kind of losing it here. I should go back and play some of those games, you know, online on YouTube. That'd be a lot of fun. You know, go back to my childhood and all that. Go back to my roots. It'd be all about this. Oh, well, yeah, I guess so. What does that have to do with anything? What's wrong with your clothes? Yeah. 
Oh, that is a good question, I guess. Oh. Oh. So, did they just not want to change his sprite work? I think that this was just maybe the development team being lazy and just not wanting to change his sprite or his artwork or whatever. So, they just kind of added in this dialogue here to explain why he's still in his military uniform rather than in just, you know, regular work clothes. Oh, well, what's that? Really? Wow. Wow, Oliver. Do they ever really flat out say what his sexuality is? Because in Cold Steel he seems very straight, but here in Trails in the Sky he seems more bisexual. I don't know. <laughs> hey, you know, everybody likes a man in uniform. Can't blame him there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Poor Tina! Oh, She's so sweet and innocent! Oh, I love it! That's hysterical! Oh, yeah. Oh, well, hopefully, maybe we'll find something out at the end of this, um, chapter. Yeah, where exactly are we? What's going on here? Ooh, okay. Will do! Yeah, it has, right over at that uh, monument that we went to. But we're going to go exploring that next time. I'll just play the Linda Heroes Trails in the Sky the Third. This has been David, and stick around for the end slate while I go around and talk to everybody since we have a new party member. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.